Hello everyone, Mr. Greeno here, going to show you how to add sound to your flash animations. I have a website open here called soundbible.com. has a lot of sounds that you can get for free. I've been playing around with this. If you search, let's say I want a ball, sound of a ball. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit, I got a ball bounce. If I click here, you can hear that's a ball bounce. If I say, oh, I like that and I want to use it in my animation, I would click on this link. And it plays it again, and you have three options here: Wave, which is fine; MP3, which is fine or good. That's what I would prefer. And then Zip, which I guess you probably get both of them in a, in a zipped file format. So they put two files in one package. I've never even tried the Zip one because I just want the one, the MP3. And I'm not going to just click on it because if I click on it, my browser is going to download it to uh, wherever the default location is, and I don't want that. I want to save it to the folder with my Flash animation. So I'm going to right-click and choose Save Link As. And you can see it's got this sound file name right here. Ball bound pop up pixels yada yada dot mp3. I'm not going to save it to my downloads, the default location. I'm going to navigate to my, or you would navigate to your Z drive, go find your folder with your flash animations, save it in there. If you don't like any sounds you find here, you can go to this website, freesound.org. They have a lot more, but Although the stuff is free, they require you to register. So you would have to actually register here, put in a, uh, an email address, they send you an email, you click on the activation link, once it's activated you can sign in with whatever username and password you chose. You can do that if you like, or you can just use mine. So the ones I set up for this project, and it should work, everyone should be able to sign in at the same sign, same time. Uh, if, you get, if we get bumped out, then I guess if you really want to sound from here, you're going to have to register. But I think this should work. So it's HHS Mr. G, makes sense. And then the password, something we can all remember, Weber, as in our principal's name, and then his telephone extension, 1515. So W-E-B-E-R, 1515, all lowercase, no spaces in between click login and then you'll be able to download stuff so again if I just type in ball over here they have a lot more uh, sound files so let's say I want this pull strike sound notice it's one second long might be a little bit more or less but around one second this one's actually a minute and 14 seconds okay so if you're looking for just little short sounds like a golf ball four seconds it probably has a well let's listen to it Well, I guess it's a golf ball that fell. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You might want that. Or maybe just want the pull strike. So you can preview it. You can preview it with the play button. Soccer ball hit ground. Let's try that. Alright, that's pretty cool. So if you want it, you click on the link here. It brings you to another page where there's a download button. And just like before, and, and of course it shows you the fuller waveform in the exact time 1.262 seconds don't just left click right click save link as save target as whatever browser you're using and the file name is going to be this now this website doesn't seem to give you mp3s um, it's all in the wave format so the wave formats fine too just take that so save it to your folder with your flash animations and then you'll be able to go to the next step so let me close out this browser and the next step would be adding them uh, to your flash animation. So right now in my library, I don't have any sounds. Okay, so I'm going to import them. So I go to File, Import, and right now it two stages grayed out because I have stuff here, and it doesn't want to put a sound on the same f uh, layer as that other stuff. That's at least what I think why it's grayed out. But I hate importing to the stage anyway because half the time I forget to look at what layer I have selected and then what I import goes into the library and automatically gets put on the stage and usually it's in the wrong on the wrong layer. So to save myself the headache I always just do file import to library. Once I got the stuff in there then I think about where I want to put it. So I want a soccer kick and they actually on that website didn't have a soccer heading sound but the one that's a stomp kind of sounded like a dull thud and that's what I wanted so I chose that one so I say open and then they appear in my library sounds you want to put on separate layers so I'm gonna make two new layers one two they don't have to be on the top but I'm just gonna put them up there to for convenience sake so there are two blank layers one layer I'm gonna call kick the other layer I'm gonna call head 
Okay, on the kick layer, make sure that's selected. I'm going to drag the kick sound. Now it's there, and you can kind of see right here, that's the one little sound it makes. There's some other purplish line to it as well. And you want to go and check the properties of that. So if I go to properties, it doesn't really show me properties of the sound right now because I don't have that selected. So I just have to click anywhere on this purplish line, and then you'll see it's selected here. Stream is best for animations, and that's what mine defaulted to, which was nice. I was playing around with it before. It wasn't on stream, and I couldn't even hear anything. The other choices are event, start, and stop. Well, stop stops the sound, so obviously we don't want that right now. Event is like an event like, hey, if play this sound if I press the G button on the keyboard, or if I click on the mouse, and start basically starts whenever you start the animation. Um, but we're trying to sync it up to actions on the soccer field, so we're going to leave it at stream. And repeat's going to be zero, because we don't want it to ever repeat. And now what we're going to do is, we're going to listen to this, and you're going to see that, and maybe it's a little hard to see, so let me zoom in over here. So if we go over here to where the guy's kicking, you'll see that he kind of, the sound kind of occurs just before he hits the, just before he hits the ball. Would you really notice that? Probably not, because it's a small little stick figure guy. But let's make it right. So this little sound thing should line up with these keyframes right here. So it's off one frame. So I'm going to click on this keyframe, which is where the sound starts, and just move it over one. And now you'll see that the sound occurs when the foot actually hits the ball. Now I'm going to click on the layer for head. I'm going to go back to my library drag the head sound, which is actually called stomp, but I kind of like it for head, and drag it on. The purple line's very, very small. So sometimes it doesn't show up right until you actually click there. Now you can see the, the full purple line. And that sound starts right at the beginning. But he doesn't head it until sometime afterwards. So you hear that little thud right there on the first frame? Well, we need that to be out somewhere over here. Guess where it's going to be? even with these property keyframes, these diamonds. So let me click here once and drag that all the way over to be even with those diamonds. And now what we're going to hear is a kick and then a thud of a head right when he heads the ball. Oh, right there. Beautiful. Okay, so that's how you add sound to your animations and link it up. Um, oops, I guess I did something wrong. You could have them both on the same layer, obviously, but I don't want to do that. And somehow, when I dragged it, I guess my mouse moved down. What I really meant to do is go from here, say I guess I went down like that, to here. There we go. Right. But as you can see, you can have them on the same layer. It still works. But I preferred them to be on separate layers, just for organization. Okay. So now that I have it just the way I want, fixed my little error that really didn't even matter. I'm going to play it with the Flash Player by hitting Control Enter. I hope you like it. I think it's awesome. You guys, I'm sure, can do stuff a lot better. But I just wanted to show you how to get it done so that you guys can do your stuff. Um, that's for the header one. That's for the stick figure one. Now, for the cartoon one, um, you can do stuff like that with different sound effects that happen at certain places. That would be syncing it up using this stream. Or maybe, for the cartoon one, you just want to have some song playing in the background. So I went and got the Roadrunner theme song. So let me import that to my library. And I got 1966 Roadrunner Closing. Wow, long time ago. I don't even know if you guys know the Roadrunner. And I don't even know why I picked that, but I did. Okay, so here's a new layer. I'm going to call it Song. I mean, you don't even have to call it anything, but I just thought I would. And then while I'm on this layer, I'm going to drag the song onto the stage. And so you can see it's a, you know, I mean, it's a song. It's two, three minutes long. Uh, this, this animation, if you notice, we're at 24 frames per second. And doing some quick math, it just happened to work out this way. 120 divided by 24 is 5. 5 times 20 is 100, and 5 times 4 is 20, 120. So this is a 5 second long animation. It's going to take 5 seconds to play 120 frames at 24 frames per second. Cool beans. Okay, 
the song is a whole lot longer than five seconds, obviously. So if I go to Properties, click back on this layer where the song is, you'll see it's set up to stream. Well, that's what I told you to use before when syncing anim animations. Let's see what it does here. So I'm going to put that to zero so it doesn't repeat, and we're going to play this. So you can tell it is synced up. The only thing is, after five seconds, the animation replays, so the song replays. So you never hear the whole song. And that's not really what I wanted. I wanted the animation to play over and over again and the song to continue. So let's change that to event, which often is the default. That's why it's at the top. Watch what happens now. <laughs> Oh my god, that's busy. Though what happens is the song continues to play, but it starts over again. So you have one instance of the song playing, then another instance, then another instance, and the repeat is on zero. But it's happening because the event is the beginning of the animation. So every time the animation begins, it starts playing the song. But the, the original playing, or the first time around, that song is still playing as well. So event's not good, and stream is not good. We certainly don't want it to just stop, so what's left? Start. And that's the one you want. So you can see that the song just continues to play while the animation plays over and over again. If, uh, I believe the animation set to play forever, or maybe it's set to play 55 times. I don't really know. That's the current frame. I don't really remember. Pretty sure I got the, the loop on here for it to play indefinitely or forever. So, when the song finally does end, even though the repeat is set to zero, because the sync is, start, is set to start, it actually does play again, if you actually wanted to watch this animation for three or four minutes or however long the song is. Okay, so song in the background, sync is the start, uh, little sound effects that happen with things um, at certain times, like the corner kick, the sync is set to stream. Okay, have fun. When you add sound to it, it really really makes it even uh, that much more enjoyable for people to watch. And if you did something really good and you add sound to it, it, it makes it that much better. Thank you so much.